It's time to do the news, everyone. Listen up. Super Adventure Box is here. Fashion plagiarism is here as well. Look at that. This player's using an outfit. They've got the Seven Reapers great. So they've got the Greenwood Scepter and the Bronze Dagger. And I can even steal their dies and impersonate them right before their very eyes. All that and more here. Couple of updates to Super Adventure Box 2, of course. The test has not been expanded. No tribulation mode just yet. Looks like we're going to have to wait until next year. Or uh, maybe even beyond that to get our fully completed World 3. You know, I, <laughs> I'd honestly be more hyped for that than almost anything. Like, scrap the new expansion. Give me a Super Adventure Box themed expansion any day. Okay, uh, that's what we that's what we really need, okay, I think. But look, you've got blue oozes, secret caves, new achievements, coin collecting adventure. Goodness me. Wow. Very exciting. We've got new decorations, all sorts of good stuff. Of course, we've got the cosmetic inspection that's been added to the game. And there's some pretty cool stuff there, actually, as well. If you mouse over a skin, you can actually see where it came from a lot of the time. Like, if it comes from... Uh, if you buy it on the gem store, or if it uh, comes from a particular vendor, it will do that. It doesn't work all the time. It doesn't know for everything. And I think some of that is because it's a little bit ambiguous on where exactly to get a skin. So I'd actually like to see them iterate that on the future. So if something can be purchased on the trading post, maybe it can figure out like the, the cheapest way that you can unlock and buy that skin. Because right now it is weird, right? Like loads of different items have the same skin, which could lead to some conflicts there and how that works. And maybe giving some kind of bad advice, like telling players to buy some like random level 37 green item or something uh, to unlock a skin. But I don't know. There's some room for iteration there, I think, uh, in, uh, you know, in that regard. Oh, no, look, they even say they're going to do that. Look at that. Due to the number of weapon and armor skins in the vast world of Tyria, the source descriptions are a work in progress that will be completed over time. Well, there you have it, then. We love to see that. Bit of a weird change here, actually, as well, is actually Jade Protocols got nerfed. They're fed up with you having boons in open world. You will have them no longer. Uh, so they will only activate every 30 seconds. Oh, sorry, every 90 seconds as opposed to every 30 seconds, which is actually a very big nerf to the boon up time you're going to get from these. Which is quite an interesting change, actually. It looks like maybe they want these to be less impactful so that maybe players are more aware when they're getting boons from other players. Because these were pretty broken. You could basically run around with permanent boons all the time, more or less. Uh, just by having this in combat and you just get every boon in the game from having both those protocols. Which was maybe a little silly and kind of prevented players from understanding what's going on with group play and like subgroups and boon applications. So that might be it. Maybe I just think it's OP. A little bit hard to say exactly. And another really interesting change actually was this. Hero's Choice Chest will now appear in clickable pop-up UI chests instead of being manually obtained from a chest object in the world. I don't really know why they did this. It's actually... I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it really matters either way. What's actually quite strange is that now you get the chest when you kill the Chak Garen. You don't have to loot the chest at the end. So you can actually fail Chak Garen and still get the Hero's Choice Chest. Maybe they'll change that at some point in the future, but a little bit weird. Functionally, though, nothing has really changed, in my opinion. And then we've also got some bonus changes to World vs. World. Like, these patches keep on coming, actually. And you can see there's a, a decent chunk of patch notes here, actually. Um, with with this and basically what's happened is is some changes to the defender's advantage so it's easier to attack and capture objectives and a couple of balance changes kind of looking at toning down some uh builds in world versus world in particular kind of looking at support builds again just turning down the sustain so that you have more damage there was one nerf to kind of a, a very funny build actually the hollowsmith build here that we'll talk about in a moment but i think the more impactful change the most important stuff is actually some of these systemic changes to attacking uh, in fact, which I'm a big fan of, actually, because I think the defensive advantage in the game is way too strong, especially when it comes to Siege. You've got really fast runbacks with mounts and gliding. It's really hard to capture objectives, I think. If, if it's a competent defense, it's really hard um, to actually take stuff, which is bad, right? Like, that encourages stagnation and just means that people don't bother to attack stuff, because it's just... It's very unfun, not very rewarding, and you're probably going to get completely owned if the enemy team is even remotely competent anyway, so... Their goal here is to prevent this. So first up, across all objectives, tiers, walls, and gates will now be rebuilt when 50% of their health has been restored. This is opposed to 10%, I believe, um, right now. So in other words, it's going to be much harder to immediately repair a wall as soon as it's broken. You're going to have to commit a lot more supply to do that, and it will just simply take longer, right? Like, you know, it's going to take longer to repair all the way back up to 50%. That's actually a big change. Something that could be very frustrating is that when you take a wall down, you can almost get baited into pushing through the wall and then they repair it when half your zerg is through and then kind of cut your zerg in half it's gonna be significantly harder to actually execute that now 
uh, I think, which is definitely a good thing because, like, again, this was something that was quite frustrating to deal with sometimes, especially if your opponents knew what they were doing, actually, which is a pretty good idea. Uh, and then the next thing they did was is that capture boundaries have been resized in a whole bunch of maps. So uh, camps, so camp, the capture circle, right, has been shrunk down a fair bit and also the garrison capture circles have been shrunk down as well and also the stuff that keeps in um eb i think stone mist has also been reduced a little bit too actually i think uh did they say that where is that well uh, maybe they didn't say stone mist i'm not sure but maybe they did uh maybe i just can't read who knows regardless that is not... Oh, yeah, there you go. Stomus Castle. Boom. Basically, what they want to do here is make it harder to just kind of keep spamming in people or, and kind of poking into the circle and contesting it to stall the capture for as long as possible. I think this is particularly obvious in uh, garrisons, actually. It's really hard to take garrison on... Uh, well, on any map, really, but certainly in Alpine Borderlands because it's just such an easily defensible location. Just keep running in and spamming off respawn. You can stall... Incre for an incredibly, almost indefinite amount of time where you slowly whittle your opponents down. So I actually do like these changes quite a lot, actually. These are pretty damn good, in my opinion. Uh, and the camps in particular can also be really tricky. The camps right next to the respawn are really annoying to take, actually, to be honest, because the capture circle is huge. And, of course, you could use golems to... Uh, basically go in a golem and just contest that camp infinitely, making it very difficult to kind of capture a camp in a small group um, if it's been heavily fortified, right? Because what you could do is you could just put a bunch of siege golems near a camp or even in the camp's capture circle, right? And then when someone comes to capture it, what you do is you just go in the golem, run around in circles, and you can stall the capture for ages and ages because they've got loads of health. They've fixed that. Siege golems no longer cause capture, um, uh, will no longer provide capture progress or capture um, contribution in world versus world so you just can't do that at all in any way you can't do that in camps that's really good in particular with the northern camps in world versus world i think this is really degenerate gameplay to be honest not good and again just kind of prevented you from coming for like a little sneak attack and sealing a camp away that's been heavily fortified and is delivering supply to these objectives so really nice change like pretty tuned in change as well like they're they're kind of paying attention with that one too presence of the keep and guild objective or bonus now provide plus 25 power precision toughness and vitality instead of plus 100 uh yeah another nerf to defenders advantage just straight up that's a lot of lost stats like a lot of lost stats across an entire zerg right so that's you're gonna notice that for sure you really will um that will make a difference i don't think the objective aura is super crazy obviously it's just plus 100 stats like using food basically on everyone or like a really strong food but yeah a welcome change nonetheless like you don't really need any more defenders advantage when you already have you know the positional advantage the siege advantage all that kind of stuff so whatever uh the flame rams iron will skill uh, now shares a cooldown between players this is really funny uh, you could basically chain a massive aoe damage reduction by rotating players on a flame ram you can't do that anymore i think it doesn't really need to be explained why that probably wasn't a particularly uh not particularly good idea i would uh i would say in that regard but yeah some pretty cool changes actually pretty cool changes uh in that regard when it comes uh to world versus world some quite impactful ones i think you'll really feel that actually uh, especially when you're on the attack so you know you might think that's not anything groundbreaking but i'd encourage you to try it out i think you will definitely notice the difference there actually some good changes and also, they have a brief note here, actually, on some of their recent changes to the World vs. World reward structure. Um, so let's just go ahead and read through this. Uh, the next few changes continue from a recent update that added new bag options with Grandmaster Mark Shards included in the price. Our goal for this and for updates from last year is to give World vs. World players more options for spending their World vs. World currencies and improve quality of life for currency exchange in World vs. World. We felt that a surplus of memories of battle specifically brought the price down too far and there were not enough opportunities to spend them. We'll continue keeping an eye on this uh, vendor and other new uh, uh, and the, the other new purchase options to determine if we need to make further updates. So basically they want to make sure that memories of battle still retain their value and you can't get them anymore from the uh, bonus vendor right you could spend start you could spend your currencies and get some memories of battle that extra influx is now gone uh and unsurprisingly I, I think the price of these are already spiked we'll see where it ends up stabilizing of course uh after these changes have gone through but yeah they're just basically making an economy adjustment here basically just to make sure that uh these things that you're earning by playing the game actually do retain their value and are you know are good so there it is an option to exchange boxes of grandmaster marks uh, for grandmaster mark shards has been added to the skirmish supervisor i mean there you go i'm pretty sure you could already 
already do this. It, okay, could you not do this in World of I feel like you could do this in World as well. But I mean, now it's on the skirmish supervisor. You don't have to go to the other vendor, I guess. Easy. Nice. So yeah, not really much going on there. But it is what it is. Next. Next up, gamers. We've got some balance changes. And these are mostly world versus world focused. Some of them have some uh, minor spillover to other game modes as well. Um, but yeah, it's mostly world versus world and PvP. And the gist of these changes is just tuning down uh, support in world versus world. I think that um, this is an issue that Arena has been aware of for a while now. Is that supports and sustain has been a little bit too high. A little bit too high. Uh, in world versus world. So they're looking to try and reduce that significantly. We see some nerfs to the shortbow weapon. Which actually... Uh, really was a bit of a shoe in immediately for support scrapper in world versus world um so comni cleanse going down on the shortbow skills and also bulwark gyro getting nerfed very significantly actually it's a really good skill obviously gives stability on the tool belt skill and of course uh gives barrier on the active component so massively reducing the barrier output actually a lot in world versus world god damn look at that like nearly like a 33 percent nerf here then uh, about a 40 percent nerf on the healing power coefficient as well Oof! Ouch! Yeah, that's uh, pretty brutal there, but I think that's kind of balancing out like the additional power that this build received from having Shortbow, which of course has some barrier access uh, kind of baked onto that, so already has that defensive utility. And, it, you know, believe this, it also got nerfed in PvP, because it turns out that Shortbow was kind of blasting, <laughs> as it turns out it was used in the mo recent monthly automated tournament, because it turns out that being able to stack up, I think, like 18 stacks of might very, very quickly, and then pumping people was very effective on Holosmith, so that is actually getting a little bit of a toned down, kind of a, getting caught in the crossfire of World vs. World right now. And some hollow nerfs as well. This one's actually really funny, like, uh, I, I'm almost... <laughs> this build was so funny, so... <laughs> I'm sure you guys know the Photonic Blasting module. It's the one where you get to maximum heat and then you explode after a quick delay. This is actually a really funny meme build in World vs. World, of course. Well, not even really a meme build, but, you know, a very funny build because it's very hard to counterplay that when you're in a large group, right? Because you can't really see the hollow overheating and blowing up on you. And this would hit like a truck. You know, you've got uh, 25 might, you've got PvE gear, right? You've got food on at the same time. You absolutely destroy people. Especially if you came in from stealth, there's some really funny clips of people just getting annihilated by multiple of these hollows all detonating themselves at the same time. So that's actually getting uh, nerfed there. A little bit, and apparently Prime Light Beam was hitting 10 targets instead of 5. That's probably something to do with the fact that, I don't know, maybe it was like applying multiple fields or something like that. So it was kind of double hitting or whatever. It was hitting twice as much as possible. So a couple of nerfs there as well. More of a normalization, to be honest, rather than a nerf. But, you know, you kind of know what's going on there uh, with that. But that's it for NG. Guardian, symbol of protection. Reduce the symbol damage coefficient from 0.4 to 0.25 in world versus world only. I mean, I, I will actually confess, I don't know why this was a problem. Um, I, in World vs. World, but I mean, I guess it was. Uh, those Guardian Hammer auto attacks just blasting, like getting that symbol down, just absolutely cranking uh, the AoE DPS, I guess. And Hammer definitely is a weapon that has seen a bit of a resurgence um, on Guardian, actually, in kind of a, a multiple gamers, actually, after the recent reworks. You know, it's good to see it back in action, but kind of interesting that you know, the symbol was pumping, you know, like I guess that extra auto attack speed was really helping out, but. It is what it is. Next up is Mesmer, and yeah, support Chrono. Yeah, they, the Arena's back for round two on this one for World vs. World. They actually fixed a, a bug that's been, you know, on Mirage since release, actually. That's kind of funny. But Chaotic, this is the big one, really. Chaotic Transference. This trait no longer shares Chaos Aura with nearby allies. It now grants regeneration to nearby allies when you apply Chaos Aura to yourself. So... Chaos Aura, AoE Chaos Aura was a little bit problematic in World vs. World because it was giving weakness spam constantly even at range. It was applying loads of boons to uh, the group because whenever you get hit, you get a boon. Whenever you get hit, you apply Comni to your ally. So loads of Comni spam, loads of boon spam, which is kind of unhealthy for World vs. World, to be honest. So like, yeah, they already halved the duration on it in competitive. They're like, okay, we give up. We can't balance this. We're going to remove this. Um, in PvE, it's probably not... Super significant is obviously a nerf in PvE slightly as well because you were getting the regeneration anyway. Uh, and now you're not going to get the Chaos Aura. So you're not going to get that kind of free boon application, free condi application. But I think this nerf was designed to not really affect um, uh, PvE 
E too much. It was mostly targeted at PvE, a uh, PvP and World vs. World, where this build was performing extremely strongly, uh, both in PvP and World vs. World. Like the new rifle in particular, really helping out in um, in PvP, like really bringing that support chrono to being the meta support that we saw in the recent tournaments and so on. And kind of on that note, a couple of nerfs to the rifle healing output in general to Journey and Abstraction here as well. Uh, yeah, nothing too crazy to talk about here. Chrono really, really strong, dominant support. This is to kind of bring it more in line. Arena's been working on making Firebrand good for over a year now. They want to make sure that Chrono doesn't completely steal the thunder uh, for support in PvP, at least for now. And kind of a bug fix here as well. Uh, with Mendes Purity, although it, you could argue if this is an unintended bug fix, whatever, but lesser power cleanse no longer triggers restorative mantras. What does this mean? Well, Mendes Purity says that whenever you use your heal skill, it also activated a free uh, cleanse mantra charge, basically, right? And that was also activating restorative mantras, so you were essentially double dipping, right? Like, if you had the heal mantra on, and then you use your heal mantra charge, it would proc on the heal mantra, then it would also proc for that lesser power gun. So you were kind of double dipping, essentially, and now you're not going to be able to do that. Like, was that uh, unintentional, basically? Not exactly a bug, because if you think about it, well, you're using a mantra, so surely that would trigger the skill, which it kind of would. Um, but obviously, they, they don't want that happening, because obviously that's quite a strong interaction. I think Chrono's still going to be fine, right? You're still going to see it in World vs. World. You're probably still going to see it in PvP. Uh, just a little bit more kind of in line with the other support builds. Um that exist so i mean there you go you know that's it, it is what it is so ranger changes we got going on here live vicariously this trait is no longer activated by pulsing healing effects such as regeneration i think this is actually mostly targeted again at druid support in pvp uh, or, or, or any kind of um sustain uh, supporty bunkery style build basically because of course when you activate regeneration with this you're basically just getting extra healing every second right this this trait says whenever you you heal an ally you get healed yeah that's what it does so this is like a lot of extra stain. now you're gonna have to directly heal someone in order to do that technically a nerf in pve as well but again i think much more targeted towards the kind of bunkery style builds in pvp in that regard. Uh, some other adjustments, again, to uh, Mace, in a similar vein to us, trying to turn down some of the support uh, in PvP. Uh, in PvE, the base healing got reduced as well. I don't think... I mean, to be honest, that is significant because this was really, really strong. And I think they don't want Mace to just be like the absolute go-to choice for support druid. It almost certainly will be because the kit on Mace is honestly sick uh, for support druid in PvE. But I guess they want it to be Slightly less ridiculous. I mean, the healing power coefficient and healing modifiers are still going to make a flourish. That's Mace 2. It's still going to heal a lot. So, I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be crying about this too much. I guess they just didn't want it to be that good, uh, realistically. And then Invigorating Bond. Base healing goes down and healing, po co healing power coefi coefficient also goes down significantly in that regard. And they reduce the protection duration from 4 to 3 seconds of PvP. Again, just trying to tone down these support style, bunkery, duly annoying unfun druid builds in pvp like we saw some changes to that last patch uh the build was still very much around so a couple more changes to that to make sure it stays dead and look at this this is actually kind of a big bug everyone who's played rev i feel like has interacted with this bug it's been in the game since the launch of rev fix an issue that could cause the skill to accidentally be cast immediately after activating facet of nature that's the activating the f2 right you use your f2 on herald and then sometimes it just immediately casts when you hit f2 we've all been there we know this happens it's very annoying when it does they actually fixed it nice you love to see that you know like <laughs> now just wait to see this pat you know this bug come back in a future update or something like that right but yeah that's a good one and finally, some changes to Warrior. And nobody panic. You know, Warrior mains, whenever they see nerfs, they already get scared. But this is mostly like a purity of purpose thing. So, Staff was really strong uh, for Warrior, actually. Uh, really, really strong. And it was so strong, actually, that um, Staff would be played even on the 1v1 build. So, on non-support Warrior builds. So, you'd play this on DPS Warrior builds, essentially. And their goal here is to prevent that. They want to have Staff as this um, support identity weapon they don't really want you slotting that into your dps build or your duelist build it's supposed to be on your heel warrior in pvp and world versus world rather than a duelist setup so that's exactly what they've done here uh because you can see right 
damage coefficient goes down, base healing down, healing coefficient up, yeah? So what they're doing here is they're saying the healing is going to be the same as long as you've invested in healing power, right? But if you don't invest in healing power, the healing is going to be is going to be weaker uh, and the damage is going to be lower because we don't really want this to be competing with damage weapons um, in in PvP, right? And honestly, that makes sense to me, right? And you can see that across the board here. Line breaker, base healing down, coefficient up, bullet catcher, that is the block. So slight cooldown increase just to reduce the sustain and again, make it less attractive as that kind of defensive weapon set option that you might have um, as your offset, for example, as a warrior in PvP. And then snap pull, slight increase in casting time to give it a bit more counterplay to landing that pull. It's a very fast pull, actually. So not a surprise that they just slightly increase the casting time. And then finally, sneak change here as well it's scorched earth this is the berserker longbow f1 a very powerful dps build actually um you know widely used it kind of blasts uh you know it's you know it does some big numbers you know you get your fire fields out and you just start pumping and this is a weird skill because it forms three AOEs when you fire it out, so its target cap is kind of weird. Um, because, of course, if you have five people in each of the three fire patches it puts down, it will hit 15 people. That's what they're trying to prevent here, right? They don't really want you having this giga target cap ability when you're in the middle of a Zerg, you're hitting 15 people in one. The target cap on abilities, well, is what Ain't It wants. They want it to be around five, right? And it looks like they haven't been able to find some kind of coding solution to this, so they're simply reducing the target cap in World vs. World. World, just to make it so it's only hitting nine targets a lot of the time instead of 15 which makes sense uh realistically like having having like giga uncapped aoe or like less capped aoe than others it, it just creates these like really weird balance scenarios where it's very difficult to actually manage these abilities and kind of keep them in check and make them make sense within the game mode so that's what's going on there uh very significant nerf though the dps output of this build is going to be significantly reduced right that's a nearly a 50 percent reduction in the amount of damage potential that this build actually has uh, especially if you're you know and of course arguably even more significant if you're only hitting if you're only getting one or two of the circles then you are gonna get way less focused damage out on the the people that you're actually hitting with that but yeah that's how it is that's the situation that's the news a little bit of a surprise balance patch in there and some cool stuff for world versus world that's the news go and play around in super adventure box and look if i catch if i catch any of you if i catch any of you going around and stealing people's fashion I am going to report you. I am going to get you banned. Okay? I'll do it. Don't think I won't, guys. Okay, this is a gross plagiarism, evil act to go and inspect people and steal their appearance. I will not stand for it. Okay? I read the I read the forums. I went on the forums, which is arguably already a mistake. Uh, <laughs> uh, and... There were some people who were very unhappy there. Maybe I'll do a video talking about that. You know, maybe we'll go, we'll we'll read some lunatic forum posts. You know, that would be some good content, guys. But we are fashion gatekeepers here. Okay, we don't allow people to, uh, you know, to do that stuff. We keep it under lock and key here. It would be nice if you could see infusions, because I'm pretty sure I can't see this guy's infusions. Because he's got, like, the Kanaxi one. But I guess it doesn't even show up in the inspect window. But still... I can't see where he got that cool infusion. I'm going to have to actually talk to this player to find out. And I can't tolerate that. I only want to inspect people. I don't want to talk to any humans okay, in my online video game. That is unacceptable. But anyway, that's the news. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, gamers. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Let me know your, your most insane take about the cosmetic inspection <laughs> that's going on here. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy, gamers. I'm out of here. Boom.